Hi. Now in this question, we're told that a curve has the equation y equals x plus 2 multiplied by x squared minus 3x plus 5. And what we've got to do is find the coordinates of the minimum point, justifying that it is a minimum. So, as usual, if you'd like to have a go at this, if you haven't done so already, give you a moment just to pause the video. When you come back, you can check your work solution against mine. OK, welcome back then. Let's see how you got on. Well, first of all, let's just uh, copy this question down. We've got y equals x plus 2 then multiplied by all of x squared minus 3x plus 5. And if we're to find a minimum point on a curve, that's where the gradient is 0. So I'm going to need to differentiate this. But before I can differentiate it, I need to expand it out. So if we expand it out just by multiplying x with each of these three terms and then plus 2 with each of the three terms, we're going to get x times x squared, which is x cubed then. x with the minus 3x is going to give minus 3x squared. And then x with the 5 is going to give 5x. Now, I'm going to carry on underneath here with the 2 times x squared. That's going to give me plus 2x squared. And then 2 times minus 3x is going to be minus 6x. And then 2 times the 5 is plus 10. And so when I group this together, we've got x cubed. And then minus 3x squared plus 2x squared is going to be minus x squared. And then 5x minus 6x is minus x. And then you've got plus 10. OK, so we've got what y is then in the expanded form. So we can go on now and therefore get dy by dx. Differentiate y with respect to x. And so if you differentiate x cubed with respect to x, you get 3x squared. Differentiate minus x squared you get minus 2x. And then differentiate minus x, you get minus 1. And the constant 10, well, that goes to 0. Now, we're looking at finding a minimum point, but there could also be a maximum point, or even maybe a point of inflection. And we collectively call these stationary points. So what I'm going to do here is just say at stationary points, we know that the gradient, which is given by dy by dx, that has to equal 0. OK? So therefore, what we've got is that 3x squared minus 2x minus 1 must equal 0. And if we factorize this, we therefore have two brackets. It's quite a nice easy one to factorise just by inspection because 3x squared is going to be 3x times x. And then for minus 1, it's going to be plus 1 here and minus 1 there. And that means that each of these factors would be equal to 0. So therefore, 3x plus 1 would equal 0 or the other factor, x minus 1, that would equal 0. And if we solve those two equations, we therefore have, well, when 3x plus 1 equals 0, if we subtract 1 from both sides, 3x would equal minus 1, divide by 3, and you therefore have x equals minus 1 third. And for the other one, x minus 1 equals 0, add 1 to both sides, you've got x equals 1. Now, if we're going to find out which one of these gives us a minimum point, you could use the gradient method or you could use the second differential method. I'm going to go for the second differential method here, d2y by dx squared. What we do is we differentiate dy by dx with respect to x again. And if I do that, for the first term I get 6x. And for the next term, I get minus 2. And then for the constant here, that goes to 0. And what I need to do is substitute the value of x 
we'll take minus a third first of all into here and check out what kind of sign we get. Well, we therefore get d2y by dx squared equals, and if you put minus a third in here, six times minus a third is minus two, and then minus another two is minus four. And that's less than zero, a negative value, and that means that when that happens, what we have here, when x is minus a third, is a maximum. Okay, so we're not interested in that particular value, we're only interested in the one that gives a minimum. So I'm hoping that when x equals 1 gives us a minimum, that is that when we substitute this into d2y dx squared, I'm hoping to get a positive value. And I can see that I do because we therefore have d2y by dx squared, well, put 1 into here you get 6 minus 2, which is 4, and that's greater than 0. So we do have a minimum. It's not the only way though, as I say, that you can check out to see whether you've got a minimum. The other way is just by doing a gradient table, and I'll do that for you here, okay? So you can see how that would work. So if we're doing a gradient table, we'll take our value of x, Let's just draw a column down here. And we would take points either side of the point that we are checking out. So we're checking out the point where x equals 1. So if I put that in here, a point to the left would be, say, 0, and a point to the right would be 2. And we look at the gradient dy by dx. Now we know that when x equals 1, when we substitute that into here, we get 0. And that tells us that the slope of the graph at that point is horizontal. The tangent there would be horizontal. If we take a x equals 0, a point to the left of 1, substitute 0 into here for dy dx, you get negative 1. And that means that our graph is going downwards like that. And when we put 2 into dy by dx, you've got 2 squared is 4, 3 fours are 12, minus 4 here, that gives us 8, minus another one is 7, a positive value. So the graph would be going upwards at that point there. So what we would have at the point where x is 1 is a minimum. So either way, what we have is a minimum. So we'll just put that in here. We can say, therefore, that stationary point is a minimum. But what we need to get is the coordinates of that stationary point. We know that x is 1, so when x equals 1, we just need to find out what y is. So if we substitute x equals 1 into, say, here, doesn't matter if you substitute it into here, either way, if you substitute it into here, I think this will be easier, we're going to have 1 minus 1, which is 0, and then minus 1 plus 10, well, that's going to be equal to 9. So therefore, what we have is that the point 1, 9, is a minimum point. Okay, we'll just finish that question off. If we just put this in, is a minimum point. Okay.